We're living on a warming planet, every species, including our own, forced to adapt or eventually die under the assault of excessive heat. We've seen that an increase in certain gases in the air has the effect of turning this planet's atmosphere into an ever more efficient greenhouse. Heat energy arrives from the sun, but can't radiate away. But even without the addition of these greenhouse gases, the fact is, huge portions of the Earth's surface are simply too hot and humid to allow people to live and work in reasonable comfort, causing some regions of the world to lag behind in progress, prosperity, and public health simply because of excessive heat. Now, since the 20th century, our answer has been to turn on the air conditioner. And this has worked, liberating tropical regions of the planet, beginning with America's own South, from the oppression of their own climate. The trouble, of course, is the more you improve people's lives this way, the more people will want their lives improved too. The demand for temperature control is growing, not just to cool homes and offices, but to refrigerate food, medicines, the basic necessities of life. More air conditioning means more energy production, which introduces more greenhouse gases, warming the planet further in a vicious cycle with no good end in sight. Which makes it all the more intriguing that less than 70 miles away from all these problems, you find one of the coldest places you could imagine, outer space. Um, you can say it's the sky, and but what really matters is what's on the other side of the sky is very cold. Uh, conventionally, if you think about how cooling happens, you need to have, the heat needs to go somewhere colder. Right, that, that's, that's how cooling happens. So, so the heat always flows from hot to cold. If you just have air around you at, at the same temperature as you, there's no reason you should expect it to go colder. The good news is that barrier is not impenetrable. Heat absorbed into the air, the ground, your house, radiates away again in the form of infrared light. And some of that light, within a certain small range of wavelengths, manages to radiate straight through our atmosphere and into the cold of space. This takes place naturally, and people have known about it for centuries. Ancient Middle Eastern cultures, for example, used this phenomenon known as radiative cooling to create ice for their own use, even in regions where the ambient temperature never goes below freezing. Now, researchers have found a way to manufacture special materials that will radiate the sun's heating energy back out at the precise wavelengths of infrared light that allow that heat to radiate through the wavelength window and vent directly into space, even in broad daylight with the sun beating down. It's an entirely passive process requiring no energy input to work. Once installed, these materials produce temperatures cooler than the ambient temperature around them, reducing the workload of a standard air conditioner by as much as 10 or 20 percent. With electricity demand expected to rise dramatically in the coming years, and much of that coming from increased air conditioner demand, a passive cooling system like this requiring no energy to operate beyond the dynamics of the planet itself might just allow us to address the needs of a warming planet without making those conditions worse.